Good morning, church. Five years ago, I put a hidden video game in our church app. Anyway, today I wanted to tell you about Luke chapter 19. There's this passage in Luke 19 that is incredibly famous. A lot of people know about it. It's the story of Jesus coming into the city of Jerusalem riding on a donkey. It's the story we celebrate on Palm Sunday. And one of the most famous parts of that story happens in verse 37. Luke 19, beginning in verse 37, says, When he came near the place where the road goes down the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began joyfully to praise God in loud voices for all the miracles they had seen. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Some Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. I tell you, he replied, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. This is one of the most famous lines of this, of this story, where Jesus says, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. A lot of us know that. A lot of us are familiar with that story, especially if you've ever been to church on Palm Sunday. But it's the thing that follows immediately after this that a lot of people don't really remember. Now, some of the Gospels will tell us that Jesus enters the temple right after he finds himself in Jerusalem. He enters the temple and he gets all the money changers to leave and he throws over all their, their tables and stuff. But there's this uh, section in Luke where we get a tiny little of an extra snippet before Jesus reaches Jerusalem. And it says this, as he approached Jerusalem and saw the city, he wept over it and said, If you, even you, had only known on this day what would bring you peace, but now it is hidden from your eyes. The days will come upon you when your enemies will build an embankment against you and encircle you and hem you in on every side. They will dash you to the ground, you and the children within your walls. They will not leave one stone on another because you did not recognize the time of God's coming to you. I talked about this a little bit yesterday, the fact that Jesus was abundantly clear with his disciples that he was going to be killed, but they just didn't get it. They didn't understand it. They were too stuck on their own way of thinking to really understand what Jesus was really about. And this is another one of those stories where the people around Jesus were oblivious to what he was really talking about. But there are two little details I want to take you to. One is Jesus says, if you, even you, had only known on this day what would bring you peace. You see, Jesus is coming to them riding on a donkey. The symbol of a king riding on a donkey is a symbol of a king bringing peace. And the thing about Jerusalem is they were expecting a king to bring peace after a war. It, see, they wanted a Messiah who would come to the city of Jerusalem and who would then declare to the Romans that uh, we're done with you. We're going to be Jews again and we're going to have a Jewish kingdom again. That's the thing we've talked about before. And so they were expecting if Jesus was going to be their king, then he needed to be a king who would first bring war and then bring peace. But of course they missed the symbol. Jesus was riding into Jerusalem on a donkey. And that was the symbol of a king who had already brought peace. The war was done. The battle was over. He wasn't riding a horse, a, a stallion. He was riding a simple donkey. See, the symbol Jesus was giving to them was that peace was available to them right then, right there, without war. Then, at the end of this passage, Jesus says that the city of Jerusalem will be destroyed, and he gives this interesting phrase, because. He says, because you did not recognize the time of God's coming to you. Clearly, what that means is that Jesus is entering the city of Jerusalem right then. He is God in the flesh coming to Jerusalem, and the people weren't going to recognize its significance. The people weren't recognizing the fact that God in the flesh had been there all along for the past few years, that God in the flesh was coming to them, and he had come to them, and they didn't recognize that God had come to them. See, here's the irony of the situation. Because Jesus wasn't bringing a victorious kingdom like they thought, they killed him. Because he was then killed, they decided he couldn't be the king that they wanted. 
And so even though the story circulated that he had risen from the dead for many of the people in Jerusalem, Jesus rising from the dead wasn't enough. For many of the people in Jerusalem, the idea of someone rising from the dead was fine and dandy. That was all, that was all cool. They could hear that story. That was wonderful. But the thing that they needed was a warrior Messiah. And since Jesus never brought the warrior Messiah, he couldn't be the Messiah. And so people in Jerusalem continued on for 30 more years waiting for the warrior Messiah. Well, as you might understand from history, in the mid-60s AD, there were some people who began to rise up and say, it is now our time to defeat the Romans. And people got a picture of a warrior Messiah a warrior king, and they decided this is the time. And so they started a revolt. And at that period in time, the Romans were fed up. They said, no, no more of this. We're not gonna have another Jewish revolt. And so they mustered all of their forces and came to Jerusalem and built embankments around the walls and laid siege to the city and mercilessly killed basically all of its residents. The city of Jerusalem was completely and utterly destroyed, never to fully be rebuilt again. Jews to this day view that as a terrible tragedy that the Romans did. And they want to rebuild the city and rebuild the temple. I'm not going to get into all the politics of that situation. I just want to declare to you what Jesus declared 2,000 years ago. Jesus said, they will dash you to the ground, you and the children within your walls. They will not leave one stone on another because you did not recognize the time of God's coming to you. See, Jesus was arriving. They didn't realize it. And so Jesus says, Jerusalem, we're done with you. You will be destroyed. See, here's the funny thing when God doesn't show up in our lives the way we want him to, we eventually decide to take matters into our own hands. We eventually decide to solve our own problems. We eventually decide to figure out our own issues. And what Jesus says is that when you don't recognize God coming to you, then there is no blessing on your future endeavors. There is no blessing on your efforts. When God has been with you and you have rejected what he is for what you want, he doesn't bless, and in fact, it will result in your own destruction. Jesus says to Jerusalem, something could bring you peace. What is that something? Jesus himself. Not the Jesus that you want, not the Jesus that you expect, but the Jesus who is. The Jesus who sacrifices himself for you. And the amazing thing about this story is that Jesus is saying to them, the peace that you want doesn't come in opposition to the Romans. The peace you want comes in embracing a savior who is higher than any governing authority, who is different from any earthly government. The peace you want comes in embracing the coming of God to you. I think Jesus would say to us, Christians, the peace you want in this world doesn't come from opposing your government. The peace you want in this world doesn't come from leveraging governmental authority to get what you think you need. The peace that you need in this world is to rest in the Prince of Peace. Listen, there are all kinds of things that the government might do right or might do wrong. There are all kinds of things the government might do to to impinge upon your perceived rights as a Christian. There are all kinds of things the government might do that you might disagree with. But Jesus says, you need to recognize where peace comes. Peace comes from the Jesus who rides in on a donkey. Listen, I know some of you are in a place right now where you're feeling a sense of war. You need to fight against something. Some of you are upset with our government that it isn't doing option A. And some of you are upset with the government that it isn't doing option B. I just want to remind you 
that Jesus declares the people of Jerusalem will face destruction because they didn't recognize the time of God's coming to you. Jesus says that the people of Jerusalem will face destruction because they couldn't embrace the peace that Jesus was bringing to them. I just want to encourage you, embrace the peace. Jesus comes in on a donkey, declaring that peace is already available. Peace doesn't get acquired through governmental power. Peace doesn't get acquired through activism. Peace gets acquired by Jesus doing what he already did. You and I just need to recognize it. You and I just need to embrace it. You and I just need to say thanks. Today, I want to encourage you to be people of peace, people who embrace the peace that only Jesus brings. Let me pray for you. Lord Jesus, there's so much of this we don't understand. Our tendency is to look for earthly power to achieve the things that we expect. And when you don't bring us the things that we expect or the things that we want, we try to use earthly power to get it. Jesus, I just pray that you would help us today to recognize that you are the Prince of Peace and that you are the one who can bring peace to our lives. Help us today to rest in you. Help us today to recognize your coming into this world and into our lives, even today. We pray it in your name, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Have a peaceful day.